Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. Today we have the Pepiaka S for review. Yes, I've spent quite some time with this guy, very close to two months in fact. And I want to say a huge shout out to Yong Chiang for actually letting me hold on to it for the last close to two months because this belongs to him, it's not mine. Thank you Yong Chiang for being so cool and being so awesome, always lending me the good stuff. Today is my last day of having it because I'm actually meeting Yong Chiang for dinner tonight. So this is going back to his rightful owner. But with all the time that I spent with this, I've messed with it quite a bit. And now I feel very confident in reviewing it. I feel very confident in talking about it. There's a huge backstory about this and I will save all of you all that trouble because if not, it'll make this video a bit too long. Let's just focus immediately on what's at hand. Now, we're talking about the Pepiaka S here. Out of the whole Pepiaka line of spinners, the one that appeals to me the most is the Pepiaka S. The rest of them look cool but they're not something that I wish I owned but this one I wish I owned. However, the price tag immediately put me off when I found out about it. Original price for this at the point of release was 425 USD but Yongqiang managed to get a discount. I think that the discount code was actually shared on the website itself but I think it was for a limited period of time. So Yongqiang managed to snag one of these at 399 US if I'm not wrong. Recently also I think there was a blowout sale and I think one last piece left of the Pepiaka S was going on sale for about I think about $130 or was it $200? $30, I can't remember, but that was a super crazy steal. Whoever got it, good job, man. Right, so the whole thing is made in titanium, which means that this is actually pretty darn light. And the moment you look at it, you already can tell, not just because it's made by CKF or a collaboration between CKF and Snacks, but because of all the different colors you actually have here, you can tell that it is made of multiple pieces. And the total number of pieces this is made up of is 20. If you count the bearings, then it's going to be 22. So we have these pins over here, these pins over here and these buttons, they are made in titanium and they are of course the machine or raw finish. Then you have the outer shield or the outer, I guess, armor pieces and these are the ones that really, really look really cool to me. These are actually PVD coated, I believe. Uh, this is PVD. It's a darker gunmetal kind of a tone. And then you have the inner skeleton or the inner frame that is PVD coated black. And overall, the whole thing is light. It feels actually very solid. There isn't this wobble or play that most spinners have and it spins really smooth like i kid you not it spins really really smooth so this is something that is to be expected out of ckf and especially with the collaboration between ckf and snacks it's you know it's it is expected for the price you pay and for the brand and name brand of all the makers and designers it's something that you would expect now on the buttons itself one half actually has a ckf logo as you guys can see custom knife factory from russia with knives and the other side you get the Snacks logo. And I believe that Snacks is a Malaysian knife maker or designer, which is pretty cool. In the corner over there, I actually have taken a kind of time lapse of a dismantling and reassembling of this particular spinner. And I want to give a shout out to Anza of Conceptual Designs because he was the first person that made a dismantling and reassembling video of the CKF Pepiaka S. Now, since we're talking about that, the main reason Yongchang got this was not because he wanted another spinner, but because he found it cool that this was a spinner and yet he could consider it as a puzzle toy as well. So when you look at it, you're probably wondering, hmm, how am I supposed to disassemble it, right? Besides taking out the buttons. And even if you do so, you'll just see that it's a straight cut through. So the most important thing is to figure out how to remove these pins. And Yongchang actually pointed me in the right direction. You kind of get this and you squeeze it together. Then this pin just pops right out. See that? And to me, that is really good machining. It's really, really well made. Tolerances are good. Let me explain to you why. It acts like kind of a spring. See that? So it's basically holding itself together. So by putting this pin back in place, you'll kind of see what I mean. Everything will just kind of snap and jump right back into place. And that's really cool. Look at that, guys. As the pin is going in and sitting back into place, you'll see that click. Look. So now, it's secure. That's something that really amazed me. And so, in my opinion, the most interesting thing about this spinner is the bearing system. It is a dual bearing system. And what does that mean? Basically, it means less bearing play. Let me just undo the buttons and show you guys what that looks like on the inside. Oops, so the bearing came out. So, we have one bearing right there. We have a long stem button. Then we have the other half of the button, another bearing, and we have a spacer. So, this whole system kind of clamps the bearings down like that see like that it's going to be sitting perfectly in place now in order for you to understand this you will need to understand bearings a little bit i'm not going to explain the whole thing but basically there is a inner race and an outer race and there's always a slight amount of play in between the inner race and outer race because your ball bearings in between are free moving right they're free spinning so you need that little bit of play but that translates to 
what we call the bearing wobble or the bearing plate in terms of most standard spinners that use one bearing for its core. Now, when you stack two together, you basically have two of that inner races touching each other and it's impossible for them to move like that individually because everything's held in a tight space like that. It's going to be hard for me to explain it, so I'm not going to really try. But for those of you who understand, good. For those of you who don't understand, think about how skateboard wheels work. If you guys have actually tried removing a skateboard wheel, you notice that there are two 608 bearings on each side. And then in the middle is just, I guess, the wheel shaft itself. And then when you put the whole wheel onto the truck, you realize that there's very little, almost no wobble of the wheel itself. That's important because, you know, you can't afford wobbles on your skateboard wheels when you want to go skate, right? So that's basically the same thing. But for that, application is amplified because the skateboard wheel is much bigger with the longer stem in between. The same logic is put into this spinner design as well. The only downside is that you don't get as long a spin time as you would with other spinners. I'm getting about like, what, two minutes, two and a half minutes on average with this spinner. Although it is really smooth, really, really smooth, it just isn't spinning very long. So that's one thing that you guys have to take note of as well when you are looking to purchase or procure one of the Pepeaka S, whether or not it's going to be on the secondary market or whether or not you're going to get it from CKF's website if they ever restock these. Now I'm going to put the buttons back and uh, well, the best way that I found out is to actually have just one bearing on the button and then you install it this way. Then you put the spacer or the washer on and then the next bearing like this and finally top it off with the other half of the button. And that's how you do it. Now, in terms of fidgetability, guys, this thing's actually quite fidgetable, even though there are a lot of hard edges all over around. They are not sharp, they don't really cut, but it might be a little bit uncomfortable to some people because some of you don't like this kind of jimping design. I think that it's a very nice design touch and it adds a little bit more grip, but I realize I like to hold the spinner in this orientation. You guys know I kind of like asymmetrical designs in terms of this kind of asymmetrical. So you actually have two different feels depending on the way you actually hold the spinner. And I prefer in this way because I kind of like to have my middle finger on this nub over here, this pin. It just feels a little bit more comfortable, right? But when you pull back, you got to be careful because if you dig your finger in too deep, you're going to scratch yourself or you're going to rub yourself against this recessed area over here. And that might cause some people some discomfort. For me, it took a little while to get used to because yes, I experienced that at first. But now it's like I have my finger up here, barely enough to just give it a strong pull. And that's all I need actually. So this is my favorite way of holding the spinner and fidgeting with it. Pushing forward is not a problem as well on either side but you get a slightly more satisfying push forward if you hold it in this orientation because of the way this is curved rather than this over here where it's curving outwards and you kind of have your fingers slip out. You have this that kind of provides a wall for you to kind of push your finger forward all the way through. And that's something that I think is actually quite satisfying as well. You don't get the typical kind of resonance or feedback from other spinners because this is a dual bearing system. And so the sound is slightly different as well. Now changing it up to a middle finger and thumb grip Pulling back and pushing forward, unfortunately, is not as satisfying on this spinner versus other spinners. Not too satisfying because I always feel myself getting knocked up here. Even on this orientation, when I pull back, it feels like this is just kind of wanting to knock my finger. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but fidgeting with it this way is not really not really something that I enjoy. Maybe some of you will, but not for me. Fidgeting with the fourth finger is all right. It's a little bit wider here as compared to some other spinners, but because it is made in titanium, it is light. And so that means that you don't actually require too much strength. So fidgeting with it, with your fourth finger, is pretty darn comfortable as well. Fidgetability wise, it's not the best. I would say it's about maybe about seven out of 10. Not the best fidgeter, of course, but not the worst as well. The feedback is a little bit different. Those of you who actually prefer a stronger feedback from spinners, you're not gonna enjoy this because this, yeah, if I were to describe it, it feels like you're spinning a little handheld fan. So, yep. That's the fidgetability in my opinion. Next, of course, is a size comparison and we have the Pepeaka S right next to the stubby. Slightly bigger than a stubby in all aspects. Now, moving on. Next point, the buttons. I feel that the biggest bane of this is the buttons. The buttons are completely flat. I don't like that. I don't like that. I would think that, you know, CKF being well, veterans in the spinner industry, basically, they would have paid more attention to the buttons. These are just flat with the designer's names all just etched out or engraved, I should say. But flat, just flat. They offer close to no grip at all. And that's something that I don't like. And unfortunately, you're not able to change out buttons because of the way this is made, because of the bearing system, which is really unfortunate. But for those of you who own this and the Zero Metrics or the Split Brain, 
you guys can just swap out buttons. And I'm not talking about button halves. I'm talking about the entire button system. You can just swap it and they're all interchangeable. So that's a plus point if only you have those buttons. Um, but the buttons itself, uh, they leave a lot, a lot, a lot to be desired. So that is really kind of sucky. The next thing is the price point. You guys already know, and I'm going to talk about the original price point here, okay? 425 USD. For 425 USD, I simply cannot understand why anyone would want to buy it. I'm sorry, Yong Xiang, I don't mean to insult you, but I simply cannot see any value to that. It's just way overpriced in my opinion. $425 for this, I mean, come on. These, yes, I understand that the cutting technology is something that is of a really high level. Made in China, sent over to Russia, and then assembled together. I think that what you are paying for probably is the puzzle aspect of it you're paying for good machining you're paying for the tight tolerances you're paying for the double bearing system and all that thought and design aspects of this spinner but still 425 is a little bit too expensive not even 399 i think not even 399 but if this was released to the public at 250 retail maybe i think that would be a much better price you know what i mean you know 250 dollars is about the price of a talk bar you know, like one of the limited edition talk bars. And that itself, I feel it's a little bit too expensive. So even for this, I don't know, guys. I just cannot see a point in spending so much money on this one single spinner. It's not the best spinner out there. It is a very, very nice looking spinner. It is really a hit turner. It's something really cool. It's very well made. It's titanium, so it's going to be solid and strong. But for 425, guys, I really cannot stress that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And that's really the reason why I didn't want to get it anymore. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is really cool and everything. Wow, it looks so good. Look at all that design. I really love this design because it reminds me of knives. It reminds me of guns. And I'm a sucker for that kind of design because it's very nice angles. You guys see, it's very, very nice angles and all that. And because it is, well, asymmetrical this way and it's got very nice color finishes and all that. But the price though, that price really just, no, I, I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm, okay, I'm not really sorry, but you know what I mean, guys. So not a long spinner about two minutes on average spin times you get a 22 piece well 20 pieces total parts kind of design which is quite cool it works as a kind of a little puzzle piece as well this is the pepiaka s everyone and basically that's it that's all my thoughts on this particular spinner you already know i don't think it's worth it it is a very nice spinner but i don't think it's worth it as always guys links in the video description below in case you are interested in finding out a little bit more about the Pepiaka line of spinners by CKF and well they have more than one collaboration but I won't be talking about all the information just go visit their website if you want to find out more. Once again thank you so much to Yong Chang for lending this to me. I enjoyed it so far the experience was quite positive just that the fact that it is so expensive is something that really just pulls me away from it and it's unfortunate but yeah that's that's just what it is right so guys i hope that i provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the snacks crossover with ckf pepiaka s spinner is a spinner for you if you're looking to get one i hope that you find one whether or not you procure it from the secondary market or if ckf ever releases another run i'm not so sure but that's about it thank you so much for sharing in this slice of my life and i will catch y'all in the next one Gaga boost everyone, gaga boost and say bye bye to this Pepiaka S because it's going back to Yongchang tonight.